into action. And Krishna tells Arjuna, uh, he tells a very beautiful verse in uh, 12th chapter, verses 18 to 19. He mentioned in this scripture, it's a yoga text. They say, no, 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 it's religious. And the problem is there about, I would say, 100 plus. I can perform answer like that while I was speaking. The next one, Pranayama. So, I know that I cannot die by holding my breath. Okay? Small kids threaten the parents. I'm going to hold my breath. Huh? Go blue and die and you're going to be sorry. Huh? You cannot actually hold your breath and die because the reflexes will come in and make you breathe. So, that's never going to happen. Okay? Now, somebody with the, with the pillow on your face is a different story. But I'm talking about you stopping yourself from breathing, okay? Uh, you cannot actually die from that. So, the, the, the biggest thing in pranayama is not breathing, but transcending the need to breathe. Now, this is a very interesting aspect of pranayama. And you have transcended the need to breathe because, because you have realized what is happening by breathing can be done even beyond it. Gati vicheda. So it is like you have gone through it. It's, it's like you have gone off on a tangent by your self-effort. This is the equivalent. All to your metabolic processes can be slowed down. Your oxygen consumption goes down. That is why so we don't have tools to help people heal themselves. And yogic relaxation is a tool that must come into modern healthcare. You don't have to go there and give them dynamic practices. That the physiotherapist can take care of that. And what you need to do is help that person relax. If you can help the person relax, they are going to heal better. If they heal better, they'll get out of the hospital faster. And if they get out of the hospital faster, all the iatrogenic nosocomial infections can be prevented. The longer you stay in the hospital, the more chances of so many infections coming. And that is why nowadays we want to get the person out of the hospital at the earliest. This is why daycare surgeries and all came into go. Earlier people would go in and for three weeks they would be in hospitals. Why do you want them out in three days? Because you realize they need to be back in a place where they, they can be at the relaxation response. You know, the stress response we already talk about, relaxation response. That is what is yoga's superpower. Yoga's superpower is the capacity to induce a relaxation response in the individual. And the moment the relaxation response is induced, or rather induced from within, the person can heal. We are often given referrals into the post-op ward where people get, you know, after they've had surgery, they uh, come there after surgery. And we often get, I remember the first such referral I got from the head of the hospital. And he said, uh, Ananda, <laughs> yes, Gregit, that is the business of medicine. You know, we have moved from the art of medicine had a higher to lower concentration, there's a movement. But once balance occurs and both sides are equal, it becomes a stable state. A stable state is produced when both sides are equal. But there's, when it's moving from this side to this side to this side to this side, there's always that movement. But then there's a point where both sides are equal and it stops. That is not what you are doing. Because people talk about expanding prana. Who are you to expand prana? Prana is the universe. Huh? It's like the small kid who thought they lifted, you know, the world. And because they, you know, put the globe on the finger or something like that. Huh? We are expanding prana. What are you expanding prana? Huh? What you are doing is you don't know anything about prana. And you are expanding your consciousness of prana. And now the question comes about expansion. Because expansion is only in one that you replace... Expansion here to here and here to here. You have the inhalation. This one movement is like your inhalation. So it is like your puraka. So puraka is this. I'm equating with the four point 
elements of prana yama if we can get it okay cool raka inhalation held in kumbhaka now when you hold it in that putting of shoot to the ocean there is a moment where it is a drop which has in it the potentiality of the ocean now the drop goes back into the ocean and now in the ocean the potentiality of the drop lies in the ocean the breath has been taken away you are having that awesome moment that is the kevala kumbhaka moment that is one of those type of experiences that is one of those type of moments an amazing moment an amazing moment that occurs now when we start off teaching pranayama you have to teach people to breathe because people are not breathing first of all people are breathing at less than 10% of their capacity as a pump is deficient or i was in berlin thanks to the gitananda society and i remember i was giving a talk and this is a very important gesture in all indian spiritual art and not just indian all asian and life went on for her and for me patanjali says in 52 tatakshiyate prakasha avaranam he says when the state of pranayama manifests the inner light comes out because what has happened is the inner light has always been there that prakasha has been inside prakasha for patanjali is a synonym for the sattva guna because earlier one of the sutras and sati means the tamasika guna tamo guna so what is happening is that he uses the word prakasha as a synonym for the sattva guna in that sutra this light that is within it is covered by avarnam now what is that shroud it is the sense of survival because that klesha especially abhinivesha has so stuck when it was good for you it's good for the world because you're out of trouble that's not meditation acts yes but they are not meditation they are not dhyana and that is where my issue comes patanjali says your mind has to be fit to concentrate because the mind is a monkey mind it is stung by a scorpion recently someone corrected me on this they said i used to say it was bitten by a scorpion they said it's stung the scorpion sting they don't bite they don't have teeth as your breath goes your mind goes so if your breath is irregular if your breath is not proper how your mind can be focused patanjali is very clear in this and many many teachings people often think patanjali is different than krishna is different than the hatha all of them are one and the same you have to find the commonalities that is the yogic approach find the commonalities find the unity and what happens all the such yoga in the manasa the mind the mind is in a very distracted state for most people manifestations of the mind the totally distracted mind and that mind has to become ekagra it has to become one pointed it has to become focused and this is actually what i was going to talk about today in our vibhuti pada and it's like you say that when i have to have an extra session to get through stuff if you are up for it i think i will be up for it because it's not about quantification it's about qualification but you know what is what is so important here is that this all pointed mind in the vibhuti pada patanjali talks about this all pointed mind has to become one pointed sarvavata ekagra kriya from going every place at the same time now when we translate it as sensory we thought people think if i close my eyes and practicing that they are in the concentration or it's basically a state that you are going in and coming out of swamiji used to always remind us that meditation is a noun not a verb and that is why he said you have to go into the state of meditation it's not meditation. you are contemplating a rose he is where my question comes so patanjali we end with that last statement today which becomes the next the first statement for next time and that is trayam ekatra samyamaha he says these three dharana look at it tomorrow 
because the whole vibhuti pada is dependent on samyama and samyama is dependent on dharana dharana is dependent on pranayama pranayama is dependent on asana that is dependent on yama niyama so everything is interdependent and that is why trying to jump straight to anything without doing first things first will always be a failure we need to do first things first that is swamiji's message yoga pade pade yoga step, step by step